my turn. I came real early. It's like rush seats at a rock concert. I just want to get your reaction. It's hard to read this to a statement made by the person involved where she says uh, that the incident referred to in the editorial did occur as reported. Mr. Trudeau did apologize the next day. I did not pursue the incident at that time and will not be pursuing the incident further. I've had no subsequent contact with Mr. Trudeau before or after he became Prime Minister. And then she says, uh, the debate, if it continues, will continue without my involvement. So could you please uh, give a reaction to that? Obviously, uh, over the past uh, weeks uh, since this uh, uh, news uh, resurfaced, um, I've been uh, reflecting, we've all been reflecting on on past behaviors, and as I've said, I have, uh, I'm confident that I did not act inappropriately, but I think the essence of this is that people can experience interactions differently. And part of the lesson we need to learn uh, in this time of collective awakening uh, is uh, a level of respect and understanding for the fact that uh, people, in many cases, uh, women, experience interactions in professional contexts and other contexts differently than men. Uh, I apologized uh, in the moment uh, because I had obviously perceived that she had uh, experienced it in a different way than I acted or I experienced it, and I think this reflection as we move forward needs to uh, continue uh, in our communities, in our places of power, in our places of work. Uh, there is an awakening going on, and uh, uh, we need to take opportunities to continue to reflect on it. This is something that I've been uh, involved in for well over 20 years in my student activism and in, uh, in the outreach that I've done, uh, and there's always more to do and more to reflect on. How do you feel, though, about the fact that she's now issued a statement saying she's not going to be involved in any of the further, she's not going to be involved in any stories going forward, and nor does she want to pursue this in any way? How do you feel about that? As I've said from the very beginning, I would never presume to uh, speak for her, for her or to have a perspective on how she f should feel or should act on this. I, I, uh, I respect uh, very much uh, her <laughs> right and her ability to make choices about what, uh, what is best for her and her family. Uh, and I obviously uh, uh, will continue to uh, stand as a, as a defender of, of um, understanding and respect for uh, individuals and the experiences they go through. This uh, situation has basically said, officially said that she won't make any further statement with this. How do you think people should be handling this at this point? Where, what, is this over? Are you going, will you continue to answer questions about it? How do you look at it? I, I will continue to talk about this as, as much as people have questions about it. This is a really a, another uh, important example of the kind of reflections we all have to have as a society about our behaviors and about specifically how uh, what can be viewed as fine behavior on behalf of one person uh, might be perceived and experienced very differently uh, from someone else. I think there is uh, an awakening going on right now and I think it's a good thing but it also requires all of us to be having difficult conversations, difficult reflections and uh, model the kind of, of, of responsibility and reflections that we have to have moving forward. You are attending uh, uh, Mr. Hare's Stampede Breakfast tomorrow. Um, Mr. Hare lost his cabinet post essentially in relation to uh, a, an allegation. A lot, for some people, they won't see much difference between what was alleged against him and what is alleged against you. How do you see the difference between those two things? I, 
I think people understand that every situation is different and we have to reflect and take seriously uh, every situation on a case-by-case -case basis and that's exactly what uh, what we're endeavoring to do in in any range of, of uh, situations that come forward. Uh, different organizations uh, uh, are struggling uh, with the similar challenges and we all need to uh, really focus on how we can move forward in a way that, uh, that uh, respects and supports uh, people coming forward and uh, allows for processes and reflections and learning while we move through it. You have had a zero tolerance policy when it comes to allegations of sexual misconduct within your party. There are serious allegations against you right now. Why not call an independent investigation and put the story to rest? Obviously, this is a, a situation that has been very much on my mind over the past uh, few weeks. It's a uh, issue that I have been deeply engaged with, not just as a leader, but all my life since, uh, since my early 20s in university, uh, active on issues around sexual assault and, uh, and behaviors. I've been uh, reflecting very carefully on what I remember from that incident almost 20 years ago. Uh, and again, I am, I feel, I am confident that I uh, did not act inappropriately. But part of this awakening that we're having as a society, a long-awaited uh, realization, is that it's not just uh, one side of the story that matters. That the same interactions could be experienced very differently um, from one person to the next. And I am not going to speak for the, the woman in question. I would never presume to speak for her. Uh, but I know that uh, there is an awful lot of reflection to ha be had as we move forward as a society on how people perceive different interactions. Um, like I said, uh, I do not feel that I acted inappropriately uh, in any way, uh, but I respect uh, the fact that someone else might have experienced that differently. And this is part of the reflections that we have to go through. Mr. Prime Minister, the question was why not call an independent investigation if there are questions, and she says that, uh, that you apologized her. Again, I've been uh, reflecting on the actual interaction, and uh, if I uh, apologized later, then it would be because I sensed that she was not entirely comfortable with the interaction we had. Like I said, I've been working very hard to try and piece it together, and, and even when the um, original uh, editorial came out at the time, I was fairly confident, I was very confident that I hadn't acted in a way that I felt was in any way inappropriate. But like I said, part of the lesson that we all have to learn through this is uh, respecting that the same interactions can be uh, felt very differently from, by different people going through them. And we have to respect that. And that's exactly uh, what we're having to come, and come to grips with as a society. And it's certainly something I'm continuing to reflect on. So do you apologize now? I, 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 I apologized uh, in the moment. Uh, I certainly feel that, that uh, uh, if, uh, um, again, I, I don't want to speak for her. I don't want to presume how she feels now. Uh, I haven't reached out to her. No one on my team has, has reached out to her. We don't think that would be appropriate at all. Uh, so I'm, I'm responsible for my side of the interaction, which certainly, as I said, I don't feel was in any way untoward. But at the same time, this lesson that we are learning in, and I'll be blunt about it, often a man experiences an interaction as being benign or not inappropriate, and a woman, uh, particularly in a professional context, can experience it differently, and we have to respect that and reflect on that. I remember that day in Creston well. It was a, a foundation, uh, Avalanche Foundation uh, uh, event uh, to support, uh, to support uh, avalanche safety. Uh, I had a, a good day that day. I don't remember any uh, negative interactions that day at all. So you've communicated that to your caucus and to your cabinet. Um, does the same, will the same standard apply to you if someone comes forward? The, the standard applies to everyone. There is no uh, 
there is no context in which uh, someone doesn't have responsibility for things they've done in the past. This is a, something that, I've, that I'm not new to. I've been working on issues around sexual assault for over 25 years. My first, uh, my first activism and engagement was at the Sexual Assault Center McGill Student Society, where I was uh, one of the first male facilitators in their outreach program leading conversations, sometimes very difficult ones, on, on issues of consent, communications, uh, accountability, power dynamics. You've mentioned the past. Some of the cases that we've heard from so far date far back into, uh, uh, into the years. And, I, and I'm wondering, uh, as you look back at your own career, um, is there a, a chance at some point that your actions might have not been construed the way they were intended? I don't think so. I've been very, very careful all my life to be uh, thoughtful and to be respectful of people's space and, and people's, uh, uh, people's headspace as well.